Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back for another episode of The History Show. This time, Section 2, The French and Indian War. By the early 1700s, France and Great Britain were competing to be the richest and most powerful nation in Europe. Both had established empires around the world, with colonies in North America and the Caribbean islands. Both also maintained trading outposts in Africa and India. The contest for power led to a string of wars in Europe and in North America. When these wars were over, neither France nor Great Britain had won a clear victory, and by the 1750s, yet another war was on the way. The outcome of this war would change the map of North America. This struggle, known as the French and Indian War in the colonies and the Seven Years' War in Europe, resulted in the French losing all of their holdings on the North American mainland. European claims in America. Although they were the most powerful, France and Great Britain were not the world's only empire-building nations. Two others, Russia and Spain, also claimed lands in various parts of North America. Russia and Spain both controlled territories in the West. Spain also held islands in the Caribbean and claimed the land that is now Florida. The border between Georgia and Spanish Florida was often a source of conflict between Britain and Spain. France and Britain were the European powers that clashed most often. French settlements known as New France lay north and west of the English colonies on the Atlantic coast and inland along the St. Lawrence River. The French also claimed land in the Mississippi River Valley. Both the French and the English claimed the land extending westward from the 13 colonies. Until the 1750s, however, the Native Americans who lived there still controlled the land. French and English traders competed for the profitable fur trade. It was not long before their nations would clash over the land itself. Trouble in the Ohio Valley The center of the land quarrel was the Ohio Valley, located west of the Appalachian Mountains and south of the Great Lakes. The Ohio Valley was crossed by the Ohio River, which wound westward to the Mississippi River. Parts of Ohio, Kentucky, Indiana, Pennsylvania, West Virginia, and Illinois make up this region today. Both France and England claimed the Ohio Valley, but the French moved into it first. At the beginning of the 1700s, French fur trappers roamed the valley in search of mink, beaver, and otter. By the 1740s, however, trappers from Virginia and Pennsylvania crossed into the Ohio Valley as well. This competition for fur trade set the government leaders of New France. As English colonists moved into the Ohio, tensions grew when pioneer families from the English colonies moved west. Land companies owned vast areas of land that they had been granted by the colonial government. Company owners hoped to make a profit by selling this frontier land and developing new settlements. Wealthy Virginia planters bought the land and and backed these companies. Both the British government and the leaders of New France were determined to protect their claims to the Ohio Valley. The French wanted the land because it lay between Canada and their settlements in the Mississippi River Valley. British settlers wanted to move west. By 1750, the struggle was underway for control of the Ohio region. Native Americans have to take sides. Control of the Ohio Valley depended mainly on people who were generally ignored in colonial politics, the Native Americans who lived there. Their decisions to support one side or the other was crucial in determining the outcome of the conflict in their region. British traders, richer than the French, could offer the Native Americans more and better goods. The French, however, offered them something more important, respect. Unlike the British, the French tried to understand the Native American lifestyle. By the mid-1700s, the French had proved more successful than the British in forming good relations with most of the Eastern Native Americans. The Six Nations of the Iroquois League, however, sided with the British. The Iroquois League was a powerful Native American confederation. The Iroquois lived mainly in western New York and along the St. Lawrence River. The Iroquois controlled the fur trade in their territory and all boat travel on the Great Lakes leading up to the first steps towards war. The rivalry between the British and the French grew. The rivalry and tensions among Native Americans set the stage for clashes in the Ohio Valley. These were the first steps toward the conflict known as the French and Indian War. It was a part of the larger conflict known as the Seven Years' War, which was fought in Europe and in Asia as well as in North America. 
the French build forts in the Ohio Valley. To strengthen their claims in the Ohio Valley, in 1752, the French began to build a string of military forts. These extended from Lake Erie in the northwest to as far south as the Ohio River. The Virginians and other colonial leaders were furious. In 1753, Robert Dinwiddie, governor of Virginia, sent the French a warning. He accused the French of trespassing on Virginia's territory and ordered them to leave. A young major in the Virginia militia, 21-year-old George Washington, delivered the message. The French commander treated Washington politely, but he refused to leave, saying no Englishman had a right to trade upon the waters of the Ohio River. War breaks out, the first battles. When he returned, Washington was promoted and sent out once again. This time he led 150 soldiers from Virginia to the forks of the Ohio, where present-day Pittsburgh stands. Their mission was to build a fort where the Allegheny and the Mahongahela rivers meet to form the Ohio River. Washington soon learned, however, that the French were building Fort Duquesne on that site. As Washington and his small army marched into Pennsylvania, they met a French scouting party near Great Meadows, about 50 miles from Fort Duquesne. Washington ordered an attack, and 10 French soldiers were killed. Under pressure, Washington's men quickly built a makeshift fort that they called Fort Necessity. As quickly as the fort was built, however, French forces surrounded it. Outnumbered and forced to surrender, the Virginians were taken prisoners. Most, including Washington, were later set free. Attempts at Colonial Unity Delegates from seven colonies met in June 1754 in Albany, New York, with representatives of the Iroquois League. The colonists aimed to make sure the Iroquois would support the British colonists against the French. The Albany Plan The Iroquois and the colonists discussed issues of trade and resolved some of their differences. After the Iroquois left, colonial delegates turned toward other plans for working together, especially on defense. They finally agreed on a plan based largely on an idea presented by Benjamin Franklin, the delegate from Pennsylvania. This Albany Plan of Union called for a council to made up of delegates from each colony with a leader appointed by the British King. Acting for all the colonies, the council would manage relations with the Native Americans. It would have the authority to raise and equip an army and navy. To pay for these projects, the council would be able to tax the colonists. When the plan was sent to the 13 colonial assemblies, none approved it. Each colony wanted to control its own taxes and make its own decisions on military affairs. Fighting the War Several more small battles took place in the Ohio Valley before the war was officially declared. In 1755, an army of about 2,000 British soldiers and 450 colonial troops set out to capture Fort Duquesne. General Edward Braddock commanded the expedition. Among his aides was George Washington. Though Braddock was a brave and experienced soldier, he was used to European battle tactics, where soldiers lined up in neat rows and fought in open fields. Washington warned Braddock that this style of fighting would not work well in the forest against the French and their Native American allies. Braddock did not listen. He even insisted on dragging heavy cannons along the muddy trails. The results were disastrous for the British. On July 9, 1755, the red-coated British were ambushed near Turtle Creek. As the French fired from the woods and hills, many British soldiers panicked. About 1,000 soldiers were killed. Braddock himself was wounded and died a few days later. William Pitt takes charge. France and Great Britain declared war in 1756. By the summer of 1757, the French and Native American troops had captured Fort Oswego on Lake Ontario and Fort William Henry on Lake George. Great Britain's King George II was unhappy about the defeats and appointed William Pitt Minister of War. Pitt took control and showed great skill for planning troop movements and strategy. The war was being fought in Europe and India as well as in North America. Pitt, however, believed it would be won or lost in America. That is where he sent troops and the powerful British Navy. This decision changed the course of the war. During the next year, 1758, Great Britain won several important victories. One resulted in the fall of Louisbourg, a major French fort on the Cape Breton Island. A 
Another was the capture of Fort Duquesne, bringing the entire Upper Ohio Valley under British control. The Battle of Quebec. In 1759, Pitt gave General James Wolfe the most difficult task of the war, capturing Quebec, the capital of New France. Quebec supplied other French forts farther up the St. Lawrence River. Taking the city would cut off French supplies and weaken New France. Quebec was a walled city built on top of steep cliffs that rise above the St. Lawrence River. Wolfe brought his fleet up the river, more than 200 ships carrying over 9,000 British and colonial soldiers ready to attack. The cliffs, however, enabled Quebec to resist the siege in, for several months. Any enemy who tried to scale the cliffs was easily seen and fired upon. Finally, Wolfe found a rough, unguarded path winding up the cliffs a few miles away. In the dead of night, General Wolfe and some 4,000 troops inched their way upward along the path. By the next day, they had reached their destination, the Plains of Abraham, a grassy field outside the city. The Battle of the Plains of Abraham The French commander, Marquis de Montcalm, marched his troops to meet the British. Montcalm and his men would not hold out against Wolfe's men. The British were victorious in the battle. The French were forced to surrender. Both General Wolfe and General Montcalm, however, were killed in the battle. As a soldier held the dying Wolfe, a message came that the French troops were retreating. The capture of Quebec marked the end of French power in North America. The fighting continued until 1760, when General Geoffrey Amherst took Montreal, the other major city in New France. With this victory, the French and Indian War was finally over. The Treaty of Paris In 1763, the British and French officially ended the war by signing the Treaty of Paris. The peace negotiations also involved Spain. Britain had declared war on Spain in 1762 and had taken control of some Spanish possessions. With the treaty, Great Britain now ruled New France, otherwise known as Canada, and the Ohio Valley, and all the French lands east of the Mississippi River, with the exception of New Orleans. France kept only its sugar colonies in the Caribbean and two small fishing islands near Canada. Spain, which had entered the war on the French side, had to give Florida to Great Britain to repay Spain for its losses. France transferred the Louisiana Territory, including New Orleans, to Spain. For the French, the defeat was bitter. France was left with no land on the North American continent. There was only one small crumb of comfort. The Thirteen colonies might revolt. A French leader likened them to a ripe fruit, ready to drop off the branch.